what I what I want to talk about and what we actually want to talk about is triggerings. Are you aware of your triggers? What are your triggers? And where do your triggers come from? And what is the solution for your triggers? Everybody wants to be so sensitive. Everybody wants to feel so entitled, which is why they're all running their mouth on Instagram and in real life to the point that everybody's worried about everything else except for them. And then when somebody says something to them, they react in a way which just displays triggered. And then they blame the person that triggered them, but they don't sit there and be like, yo, you know what? This is where this came from. Let me figure out why this even exists and how I can correct this because at the end of the day, anybody who can control your emotions is your master. Big shout out to YouTube. Thanks for everybody for tuning in. We have an interesting conversation. Guys, listen to this. Aaron literally just got off a flight straight to set. Big shout out to Aaron. Woo! Aaron the Renegade. Aaron the Renegade. She's a pure renegade. Y'all don't know what I had to do to get back here. Amanda's coming off of a crazy, crazy weekend with friends. She said she had a friend that that was in such... <laughs> Say that. <laughs> and then we got Rico Hondo, who's on his suave. Rico says, "I'm from Italy. Do not invite him to anything if it's not on the Amafi coast. <laughs> if it's not at Formula One, he is not coming out. Oh, child, that Negro please. gonna be at a bar- at somebody child, in somebody please. backyard at a barbecue right, with a chicken he leg. Says, like, yo, he's south of France. You guys he's don't not see me out anywhere else. This nigga lives in Jersey. Marie, okay. Marie, Marie, <laughs> um, I don't even speak style. English anymore." Look at Marie's hairstyle, guys. It's actually really nice. Oh, Shout out to Marie's like new this, hair. Marie. You got keeping it like that. It's only for one day. <laughs> if only for one night. Right, you have to stand next to Marie so I can put you on the camera, young lady. Lonnie's already Hey, guys. Lonnie has new hair, too. <laughs> so, you know, oh Aaron's going to introduce our topic today. Look, look, guys, we just want to tell you guys, thank you so much. It's like, you know, we're eight at the table. It's all about consistency. We just want to really do it for you guys and everything else. And it shows with the love. It shows with how you guys appreciate it. And I know we're going to become the biggest show that the internet has ever seen. And people are going to be like, damn, they just blew up. No. Nah, dog. No, dog. <laughs> <laughs> no, indeed. Nah. And I know people are going to be like, we're the biggest thing in the world. And, I, you know, you, you could tell because we could tell by the support and the love that we get. But. It's all that work that we put in since 2018, and that all comes from you guys. That really, you know, the cast is amazing. That that's everybody, the people in front and behind the camera, just grinding out. So when it happens, just know that you've been riding with us, and we we'll, we won't forget you guys. So Aaron's gonna open up with something that you may want to hear. Was keeping your ass single? Yeah, this might be keeping you single. This is a thing that you don't know about yourself that might be keeping you single. And here it is, Aaron the Renegade. So, guys, and we were, you know the clip where I went crazy the other day? Love it. Um, That's my favorite Aaron clip right now. <laughs> about, um, what was it? Like, either you like people me or you com- don't. Yeah, yeah I hate com- complaining. I hate complainers. And so when Amanda brought that up, I just, it, it, it triggered me. It triggered her. And I just, I really went ham. And I'm not even, like, a person that gets, like, super emotional like that. Um, I still didn't raise my, raise my voice. Let me just point that out. Um, but it, it was it was just so crazy to me because like when I went back and watched it, I was like, God damn, she, like, she it, it was, was really it was tired. like this, yeah, it was like this. And then even when we talk about other stuff, because I remember Alan, I think Alan may have pointed this out one time when we were talking about like the house and house chores and stuff like that, and I get a little triggered with that too. <laughs> um, but this I, the reason why I'm bringing it up is because I think a lot of times that we have triggers that we are not aware of and it creates um, a problem in our relationships or in our dating and I think that one you have to be aware of what your triggers are even though the other person is not responsible for your triggers I think they should be on notice of what they are so that they're you know 
not tiptoeing around you or walking on eggshells, but that everything that they do and say is not going to be a trigger for you and put you in like a weird, you know, frame of mind and state of being. So, mm -hmm. right. I think it's a good thing that you mentioned that they don't have to tiptoe, but it can also be as simple as finding a different way to say something. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, because, and also I do like that you said that not everyone knows their triggers because I completely agree. You never really know what's going to trigger you until it happens and you feel very strongly about something. Like, you could you could have not known that complaining triggered you <laughs> until we had that conversation. <laughs> I'm pretty sure you already knew that, yeah. though, but... It could have it could have easily been that like yo yeah mm -hmm. you know I when understand. when my husband does that or when this one time this nigga did that like yeah that really that really yeah. fucked me up like like sometimes people don't know it until it's happening in the moment. Aaron, can you give us a just one example of what complaining sounds like? Just one. What does complaining sound like in your ears? I'm gonna be honest. Complaining sounds like a bunch of the shit y'all be doing on the internet every fucking day. Women this, women that, men. Shut the fuck up. Like, it's okay to complain, but have a solution. Like, nobody is talking about solutions. And it's, it irks the hell out of me because it's like when you're complaining and you're not putting forth a viable, reasonable um, idea to fix it, you're part of the problem. You're part of the noise. You're, 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 you're not making anything better. If anything, you're exacerbating the issue. And that's exactly what it is. It's just noise. You're just talking. Yeah. Like, you, you literally, it, it, it serves zero purpose. It, there's no benefit. There's nothing to gain. It's just, you're just putting, you're just wasting your breath that you might need in your 70s. <laughs> <laughs> like, I just, I, I just really don't understand, like, why people complain so much. You know, and the thing is that a lot of us, I think maybe part of it is because a lot of us, we have something to say about what other people are doing, but we're not willing to address what our issues are. And so in order to deflect from what our issues are, we want to go complain about uh, uh, bitches in BBLs and, and women that got snuffleupagus eyelashes, you know, or, you know. You, you, you think that's complaining? No, but it's like, as a man, so as a man, what does it do for you to get on um, Al Gore's internet I was about to say and Beyonce's, Beyonce's, no, Beyonce's internet. This ain't Beyonce's internet. Uh, this is Al Gore's internet. And complain about the eyelashes that a woman chooses to put on her face. It ain't your woman. So why do you care? You care so much to take some the time out of your day to eh, on your phone. Why do you guys just don't understand? You what benefit does it bring to your life? You know. So I, I I'm sorry. Like it, 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 I'm befuddled. <laughs> I am so befuddled, nah, sometimes, confused, flabbergasted, everything. That kind of complaining don't really need solutions for them. It's just, that's honestly, they just be talking. They be talking for clout. They be talking for likes. They be talking for, you know, retweets. I, who's going to agree with me? I might go viral. It's just well, a moment. It's just a moment for them. That's true. But what, what, what happens if that, this is the thing, right? We try to do here on Eight at the Table. We try to tell people what real life is, right? So what if I take that behavior out of the internet, which is not real life. And put it in real life. And I'm on a date with you. And I say to you on a date, mind you, I may be the nicest looking guy, have the most manners and everything else, take you to the nicest restaurant. And in the middle of our conversation, I said, don't you think these girls are crazy getting all these BBLs and fake lashes? I hate these girls. On a date. If a man said that to me on a date, in my mind, I'm like, I'm gonna finish this drink or finish whatever I'm eating. But let me get the hell up, up out of here. Cause you're gonna take time out of our date where we should be engaging and getting to know each other. And you're gonna talk about a BBL? Do I have a BBL? Do I have snuffleupagus eyelashes? Why are we even discussing that? It's like your your ire is so misplaced. Does he know if you even have a BBL? That's not something you you put out. Well, what was happening right now in the dating world, a lot that, of men BBL, are walking shit. into these dates <laughs> repeating what they what hear they on hear. the internet. So it's like... Man, this yeah, is, Hondo. first of all, stop, Alan. You're starting to really just... I'm going to take every corona away from you for the rest of your life. I mean, because like, this estrogen is getting out of hand here. I, I, like, first and foremost, everybody's complaining. And there's more women complaining on the internet than men. That's for one. I'm not even going to get into that. 
right? How's your empirical data to prove that? Like I said, I didn't talk while you spoke. That's what I'm going to say. And I'm practicing that. So I want everybody to implement the same respect. Yeah, I know you didn't. You're the main one that talk over people. So, don't you ever. Don't, don't you ever in your life. Don't get triggered. Don't you ever in your so life. Yeah, that's now, a trick. So now with that being said, I did it. So now with that being said, everybody's complaining. And I, and I believe there's more women than men complaining on the internet, especially. You know what I'm saying? Women have been, women been known to use their voices in the way where they could benefit them and, and, and you know, if a man reacts to the issue. So if a man is now getting to a point where he's asking a woman, whatever the current event is, realistically on a date, he just wants to see, are you in agreement or do you align with what he's seeing? Because somewhere down the line, it's going to pose a problem because regardless if we want to act like we're oblivious that we don't talk about it when we built a platform talking about what happens on a day to day. We built a platform talking about BBLs, eyelashes, complaining men, uh, feminine men, masculine women. We built platforms in the last five years talking about this. So if you think a man or a woman is not going to go on a date and also speak about it, it's going to be or, or at some point in your relationship, speak about what's going on. You are just already setting yourself up for failure, you know, so. What I do think is that we need to be mindful that everything that we see is what we see. You know what I'm saying? Everything that's going on is a reality to a, a certain capacity. And it's not to be discredited. And just because you have opinions or views on it, it's just, that's just what it is. Now, if you get triggered by it, then that means there's some self-reflection that needs to be done so you can figure out what is the triggering reasons for it. But that's a whole conversation that I think that we're on today is about the triggering. What is triggering you? Why it triggers you? Where does it stem from? And are you even aware of it so then you can articulate that to your date so then that way you can stop being triggered and stop having the, you know, failures that you are in the dating world if you are even having failures in the dating world. You know what I'm saying? I think that's what we need to stay on. For me, I think that the BBO <laughs> and the botched bitches <laughs> conversation for a date is just, it's just tiresome to me because... I feel like that's oh, what dang. anybody talks about on the internet. That's right. what everybody talks about on the podcast. Like the the conversations that just happen over and over. It's just tiresome. Thank Please you. don't come on a date talking Thank about you. that shit, to be honest. I don't I don't give a, a damn about BBL bitches. I don't care if you got them. I don't care if you got a bad one. I don't I don't care if you got a great one. Like I don't care about it. Like at all. Like it really serves no interest to me. So let's not make that a topic of conversation. Okay. So, like, yeah. how, but, but think about it. How dense do you have to be to come on a date talking about another woman? But I'm just saying, you know what I'm saying? If I'm on a date and I said to you, about you men. know, like... Okay, as a man, why would you come on a date it, with a woman talking about another man? It, okay, well, let's just take, like... have one? Like, super lame. I don't understand. talking about another man? No, he's, he's saying... He's he's saying this, he said women do the same thing. But I was like, even... If it's the other way around. Be like, yo, uh, I'm tired of guys always talking about how much money they got and they be on the internet. Right, that's dumb. And they be at Ruth Chris. Why would I that? (laughs) Like, that's the problem that I'm like, again, we're going somewhere that not even, uh, we're getting off topic. We're not off topic. We're, We're getting off topic. The topic is about triggers, right? So when we're talking about triggers... I don't even care about the dense conversation or or your opinion on what's dense and what's not. What I what I want to talk about and what we actually want to talk about is triggerings. Are you aware of your triggers? What are your triggers? And where do your triggers come from? And what is the solution for your triggers? Everybody wants to be so sensitive. Everybody wants to feel so entitled, which is why they're all running their mouth on Instagram and in real life. To the point that everybody's worried about everything else except for them. And then when somebody says something to them, they react in a way which just displays triggered. And then they blame the person that triggered them, but they don't sit there and be like, yo, you know what? This is where this came from. Let me figure out why this even exists and how I can correct this. Because at the end of the day, anybody who can control your emotions is your master. So. Because I'm thinking about triggers in the dating world, right? And I'm saying, I'm thinking to myself, like, if I'm dating a girl and she's single, and let's say if she has children, I'm I like, I hope Yo. she's single. 
dating. <laughs> That's actually a good point. This is real, see, this is eight at the table. We're talking real life. A lot of girls go on date and don't be single because they're trying to look for the exit. So we got to talk it for what it is. A girl go on a date with you looking for an exit. All the time. I'm just saying. Date. Aaron, am I wrong? I would say a person who goes on a date. Like, but why are you asking it. Aaron? Like, Aaron is the expert. Yeah, on, no, I don't because fucking Aaron, know. Because Aaron, Aaron is very like, very logical on black and white. But the thing is that if I'm looking for an exit, a date matters not. You know, like you can, you can take your exit. Yeah, you can. You can trying to be. You messy. can plan your exit. You're trying to be yeah. two timing. Sure, you are gonna take that date. Yeah, not you using old school word two timing. <laughs> Who said that this morning? Your mama. <laughs> that old two timing helpful. <laughs> but what I'm saying is like, let's just say if 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 I'm young and single, and not even young. Let's not do ageism in this. If I'm if I'm single and I'm dating, no, it has to be young because this this is an age age thing, not ageism, but age thing. And you like, yeah, my my grandmama gonna have a baby, so you can come pick me up, and we're gonna go out. That's a trigger for me. Why is that? How, Your how grandma times... gonna have the baby? Her grandmother. Is that what's the trigger? Yeah. So how her grandmother you watches left your the baby? baby with the grandmother. Maybe this is the first time. I don't know. It's gonna trigger me. Right. So why does it trigger you? I'm sorry, but why? Because I feel you're irresponsible. Wow. Your she parents, has to your go parents, out wait, wait. and she has somebody to watch the baby. Why is that a trigger for you? Let's go on a coffee day. Show me you got some kind of etiquette. You gonna bring Are the you baby? Gonna bring the baby? You no. want her to bring the baby? The baby's in school or whatever. No, he wanted the baby. He wanted the lady to leave the baby. Like that lady that went on vacation left the baby. <laughs> not <in the> making, <laughs> not making sense. Leave the baby in the house. First of all, she said her <laughs> grandma. I'm about my triggers. I'm not saying they're right or wrong. Right, so, and, and, right. And so I'm asking, like. So are you saying that for you, that indicates that grandma's raising that baby and you out yeah. here in these streets? Like for me, it feels like, okay. like being that- Thank you. I'm not the only guy. <laughs> yeah, it feels like, because I've, you know, of course, when I was young, I dated a, a, a girl with a baby and the way she handled herself was like just fucking respectful. Like I admired her. She was like, I can't do that. This I could see you around one o'clock if you want to have lunch. Because I have to be back by three, and then you know we could talk on the phone. And I was just like, "Okay, uh, she's being a parent." <laughs> I don't know. know. She's taking I care of her like, responsibilities. Like, I'm like, like can we not trigger, make that just like, like a, that is a you thing? I don't feel like every trigger is a you thing. Every well, okay, I guess. I feel like some people can share certain certain triggers for for certain reasons. So if if I feel like somebody is lying to me because I was lied to so much in the past, that's the triggers that some somebody shares with other people, you know. But you specifically feeling like when you're dating someone with a kid, when they are able to leave a kid with the grandmother, they are not a responsible parent. No, see, again, triggers are not, and this is what we want to tell the audience, triggers don't mean you're right. It's just what triggers it you. What it, it is what it is. Like, for example, if you're a woman, you've been getting your ass beat in most of your relationships. Jesus Christ. When a man raises his hands, it triggers you. And the man is looking at you like, you okay? Like, this man never hit a woman, never raised his voice to a woman, never touched a woman in that way. But because she's, she goes like this, and it's, it's almost like triggers, honestly. This is a good example yeah, because it makes are, sense. But triggers, when you have a trigger... Like PTSD. So let's yeah, define triggers real quick. Yeah, but when you have a quick, trigger... How you, find it? you should be able to talk through your triggers with your partner so that it doesn't continue no, no, to no, happen. This is, not, this is not your partner. This is or triggers whoever you're dating. dating. Okay. Yeah, I don't think it's 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 like triggers are very challenging sometimes. Um, just okay, just to say, triggers are sensory reminders that cause painful memories or certain symptoms to re, like resurface. Say that one more time. Can you say clearly, editors, editors, put this in. Go ahead. What is it? Triggers are sensory reminders that cause painful memories or certain symptoms to resurface. So, like, triggers are different. You have triggers that aren't rooted in, like, specific traumas, right? And so you can probably regulate those and ground yourself and be like, this is okay. Then if you have a trigger rooted in a real trauma, it's going to be really difficult for you to regulate yourself and be like, you, this is not happening to me again. So I think we have to make a distinction. Like you having a trigger of, you know, someone who baby whatever is watching the grandmother. That's that's probably maybe not rooted in some deep trauma, but if you're talking about some domestic violence where you were beaten 
to a pulp. I had a thought when I was young, Lord. and she beat her child to go to sleep. Oh wow! And I was just like, "That is crazy." Oh, that's to me. wild. Yeah. I was only sixteen years old. Oh, uh, no judgment. Yeah. Right, but <laughs> how do you explain? Are you me? I'm I'm just trying to think about how you would like talk that through about about that specific trigger. Yeah, how do you say that? Like, um, I'm sorry, but like you leaving your baby with your grandmother or the grandmother is kind of triggering to me and that makes me feel like you're not really a sufficient parent. Or you could be like, hey, how often do you leave the baby with your grandmother? Every day. <laughs> That's what it is. And then, and then there's your answer. <laughs> That's where it is. Like, you could be like, you want to talk about the truth. This isn't for me. Oh, no. Like, this is, my grandmother's literally doing me a favor today. She's always traveling and she's in yeah. town and she wants to spend time with her grandbaby. Cool. First of all, women get triggered if you question their parenting as a mother. So, it don't even yes, matter how I said it. If I said it in any way, yes, they should. if I said it in any way, it's a, what you mean? I'm doing this. I do this. I do that. The dad, da, da, da. And it gets into a whole nother thing. So, it's like, when you're having a trigger with another trigger, how do you actually have a conversation? It's called a but shootout. Hold it, on. It, that's what it's a shootout. Exactly. Rico, but if you think if you're a great parent, if you're a great mother and someone asks you a question, like, do you really think you'll be triggered? So here's the thing. This yeah. is what I realized. Mm. This is this is it's a double edged sword. Maybe not Some people who offended. are great parents that get questioned, they get offended, and then they react because they find it as disrespectful. Some people are actually shitty parents and the shoe fits, but they're in denial, so they react. So it's like I don't even know if your reaction is because you you feel offended that you're actually a good parent and you and you feel like you've been placed in a category as a bad parent, or I don't know if your reaction is that you're really a bad parent in denial. You, you know what? Let's go with this, Marie. This one is right here is important. What Rico is saying is what I thought about with triggering. Right? Is triggering rooted in shame? Because if I ain't ashamed of something, why would it trigger me? Oh. Yeah, Ooh. triggers rooted in shame. It's not necessarily it. Oh, you, you can't, might, yeah. Like, it, it's like a. That's when you're saying trick. It's almost like a stimuli. Do you understand what I'm saying? So it's it's something like that causes. check. No. Oh. It's almost like something that will cause a reaction, right? That's and what so triggers me. It doesn't necessarily have to be rooted in shame. It could be rooted at something that made you uncomfortable, something you didn't like, or something that didn't flow with you. It's 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 not it, like it's not a. No, I can't I can't agree with that. Like, all right, Aaron. Think about what we talked about earlier, right? I said, for me, I could imagine a man being triggered if a woman orders the most expensive thing on the menu because it feels like you're trying to play me. Because I know I'm being You've been played? advantage of you. Yeah, but it's not even about you taking advantage of me because it might not even be that. But think about as a man. If you are in the pack of men, real men, and a woman plays you, you're a clown, which is shame. You're going to get... Well, so you've been word. played. The only way you or know you that sensation. Yeah. Shorty Sometimes plays you, you, son. Fear of it. Or, yo, Shorty no. got a $400 bill the off your back, The only way, son. You, Alan. Right. Come on, that's crazy. The only way you know what it feels like but, to be played is to have been played. Somebody played you and you don't want to be played again. Yeah, or you know what is, or you've heard what being played feels yeah, like. You're not going to, then you're just, you're just hypersensitive and hyper aware. You're yeah. not necessarily Very, triggered. No, paranoid. it's triggering okay. too. <laughs> yeah. Paranoid. See, that's what I'm saying. That's the root of the conversation, right? right. So I'm on a date with you. Paranoid it's not is even about. Trouble. It's not even about anything. You decide to order. What you say? The extra sea bass with the lobster stomach and the da 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 da. Right. And I'm like, damn, it's like ninety eight dollars. And has so no sides. I feel some kind of way. I'm a little bit triggered. Damn, I'm right. I'm like, is she using me? And mind you, you make ten times more money than me. Okay, so I'll pay for it myself. Right. Bye. So, so, but that's what I'm trying to say. Triggers have nothing to do with anything. You make 10 times more money than me, and this is your custom baseline. Maybe you're insecure. It's mm. not insecure. It's you're it's inse your trigger. That's what that's what she's saying. So something has to cause the trigger. Yeah. So cause and effect. See, that's what it, it, and, you, I think you're confusing triggers with okay, if all your boys are always consistently saying, watch out for these girls, watch out for these girls, watch out, they be trying to right, order let's, them. Let's, let's not put that on me. Let's move it away. The all internet. right, but what I'm saying is triggers is very specific. And then there might be you being hyper vigilant and aware so that you don't get played. That's not the same thing. I mean, if it's causing a reaction based on the definition, it's still a form of 
a trigger. Whether I don't, it doesn't matter what we list it as, you're still being triggered. Something that has been programmed to you, whether it's been your friends or something that you fear of being listed or or a victim to, is causing you to react in a way where you're out of character. That is a trigger. So if I fear being played, and I think of oh, this girl texting me that she's going to sleep at 8 p.m. on a Tuesday, I'm overreacting because it's triggering to me that I could look like a sucker because I actually believe she went to sleep at 8 p.m. because of all the things that I've heard in my life of women going to sleep at 8 p.m. That's a trigger. That's paranoia. But it's also a trigger. I'm not saying that there's there could be a paranoia. There's paranoia for a reason of triggering. There's trauma that could be reasons for triggering. There's a bunch of different reasons for triggering. It's still a trigger. No. Let, that's the Marie, thing that you Marie, don't, Marie, that's the just, thing that, real let's quick. just conflate them all. No, because let's I don't just think, them all. no, <laughs> in terms of like neurologically, no, that's Thank not you. a trigger. Not because when you, when a triggered thing so, happens. So what is that? That's paranoia? Yeah, that's it paranoia. Is. Do you, okay. When someone experiences something before and they're triggered, like let's say you were somewhere and you smelled something and then something, whatever it is, and something (laughs) bad happened to you, right? That memory, let's say, I'm going to go extreme. Right before you got harmed or shot or hurt, you smelled roses, right? What happens is that's a trigger for you. So now when you smell roses... In your mind, neurotransmitters literally release certain chemicals that makes you feel like that might happen again. That's what you call a trigger because there is a biochemical, like there's something happening in your brain. When you are paranoid, that's a little bit different. I think we are not understanding the difference between a trigger Uh, and being paranoid about something. Can we roll the tape back? Because Marie specifically stated... I mean, wait, wait, hold on. I didn't interrupt nobody. I was just That's telling Marie right. to read it again. We don't have Marie, to specifically the ta- Ma- Marie specifically stated there's a difference between triggers from a trauma right. versus what? What was the opposite of that? I said, what was the opposite of that, I Marie? I said it, it ranges. It could go from a no, trauma. No, no, no. What was the opposite? Well, tell her. You uh, tell her. You know. Tell her what she said read then. It again. A trauma is it? No, read hold on, hold on. Because a trauma is an experience. So now we're saying that triggers have to have triggers have to come from something you experience. That's yes, what you're it does. It, it's a it sensory. It's based on. Yes, it's, it's based a, on. It's, it's a, like a sensory point. reaction. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Wait, wait, wait. Possibility. Everybody, wait. Everybody, wait. What's happening right now? We forgetting this is a no judgment zone. And I feel like you guys have been a little bit condescending because Rico and I are not getting it completely. I'm not agreeing. Not well, yeah, I didn't have a degree in. in I said so it's a sensory reminder. No, I'm trying to get it because Listen. I feel like if I'm on a dinner and I ain't never been played, and you order the most expensive thing on that menu, I'm gonna feel triggered because I feel like you're trying to play me. Okay. And so ain't nobody played me before. And I'm okay. not trying but, to get played. But, but Alan, it has to be connected like, to some... It's a sensory it's reminder. It's not nothing. It it's could like be connected. being outside, nigga, I ain't trying to get shot. So I move accordingly. That's paranoid. Guys, You're guys, guys, guys. First of all... A reminder of what, A Marie? sensory reminder. A reminder of what? Could it be a reminder of that my dad told me to never to never trust a woman to go to sleep at 8 o'clock? So, could it be a reminder that... that could be it. That's what but, I'm trying but to that, make sense. But that's okay, not I'm an experience. That. People, is it what I'm is. Saying. It is an experience it's because dumb. if your father meant a lot to you and your father drilled in your head and you could remember there were periods where your dad is screaming in your head, don't ever let no bitch play you. And that is a sensory reminder. So now you're at dinner, right? You're thinking about your father. She's ordering a $100 dinner Oh, this bitch is trying to play you. So that's a sensory reminder of what your father told you. So is that a trigger? So if my homie is a trigger because it's a sensory reminder. It doesn't matter who told me. Because if if Alan means a lot to me, and Alan's not my dad, and and I take Alan's word as the same Marie. Wait. At at the end of the day, it's all the same. Let them get their minute. But it's a difference between being paranoid and a sensory reminder. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? No, they don't. That's what I'm saying. So don't argue with them. Like it's not uh, even worth it. You know it. what? It's already eight oh nine, and we don't right. know the guest is coming. Like, like they're they're. Well, just, where my thing is that where does truly paranoia t- come from? The guest is gonna text you. Oh yeah. There are truly uh, different definitions, and if we're not gonna like yeah, try to understand them, anywhere. yeah. If it's never happened to you before, or if you don't have anything that you know comes yeah, up in the past, yeah, it's, the it's not a trigger. You're just paranoid. You just don't want it to happen to you, and that's absolutely okay. But 
you can't say that it's a trigger for right. you. Right, just like, I don't want cancer. You know, but it's not a so trigger. So if I feel a lump in my breast, right. I'm going to be a little paranoid. That's but I'm not hypochondriac. I'm not, I'm not <laughs> triggered. <laughs> I'm Seriously. I'm not paranoid by anything. If I've been lied to in the past, then I'm going to be triggered when I feel like a nigga lying to me. But, but if I've are. never been lied to me and all of my relationships has been like sweet roses and kisses, then I'm just paranoid that this is something that could happen because niggas lie. So I know that this, this nigga might be a liar. You know, you, you get what I'm saying? My last nigga wasn't, but this nigga could be. <laughs> See what I mean? Like, th like. Uh, well, I'm like, asking me some other stuff. So okay. it's kind of. Are we? <clears throat> I thought you were working on not interrupting. No, I actually I didn't know that you were gonna speak. <laughs> um, I think that honestly, if we're not willing to listen to the what the professional has to say about it and understand what what each what each word means, we should just agree. That y'all don't, uh, that no. you don't agree with what, no, like. No, no, Aaron, but what I'm saying is, like. We're going in a circle. I don't want to go in a circle. I want the audience to understand what we're saying. There's a huge difference being triggered and being paranoid. Yes. The internet has basically turned a dating pool into a paranoid frenzy. Men are worried about what a woman's going to do to them. And women are worried about what a man's going to do to them. It is becoming like a self-proclaimed prophecy. It's like, this is this, this is that, this is that. But what happens is I feel like the reason why I'm saying the trigger and the, way, the reason why I'm pushing it in that sense is if I know it can't happen to me, it can't trigger me. Okay. I don't care what the situation is, right? Like, you know, I ain't about that. Like, you go on a date, right? You order triple tell lobsters for five hundred dollars you know a nigga can't play you how you gonna play you how you gonna pull out your card and pay and keep it moving right so he can't trigger you he can't do any possible thing because you're in a position where you're good do you understand what i'm saying to you so when i say trigger it's like i gotta be in a vulnerable position to be triggered because if you're i'm just good, offended you can't trigger me I think, okay, maybe you're just offended. I, I think sometimes maybe people confuse being triggered with being offended, or maybe that you're uncomfortable. Be, maybe possibly. Maybe what the person is doing based on social norms and narratives that are happening on the internet with people taking advantage of other people, you're offended by what the person did. I don't know if it's offended because uh, to me, a, a downgrade word for trigger is you're pissing me off. Mm, I disagree, but... Um, okay. you saw my text? No, I'm just, I disagree just based on what... what triggers with the definition of trigger is like i don't even care no more let's just get into like what we're talking about this is what we do we go this is here. what we are no, talking we, about we, we don't we're not talking about we're talking about definitions like we are no, Marie, became a thesaurus when, when aaron just like when, when rico's on one of them days he's pissing no, aaron off like Aaron's face. no he's I mean, not pissing me off what's uh, pissing me off is like I meant to I, say we're not that. listening but to the professional okay. and trying to understand where okay. 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 literally you get oh no, I'm, I'm annoyed you get words that are synonymous to each other i wonder if paranoia and and trigger could be there but they're not Exactly, wonder, but you, you know. but you said the word thesaurus, and I also corrected myself, and you continued to carry no, on. Yeah, no, because I had to go with what you said originally. No, but when I corrected myself, it was not. Needed. Well, why wouldn't that come up? The, why this wouldn't the dictionary I, be hey, the first listen, thing that you think of? Listen, I don't have time to waste with you. Um, so <laughs> wasting time right now. So the problem again, there are triggers that are existing, right? Like my triggers. Okay, my trigger is if you are inconsiderate and in what I deem to be inconsiderate. Right. For example, if you were to, we, I'm just going to bring this back in full circle. If you were to ask me to go get popcorn while we're watching the movie at home <laughs> and you don't pause it, that's my trigger because I don't do well with inconsideration because I've always been a very considerate person. And when a person was inconsiderate after I've been considerate, it caused me to react a certain way and it developed certain uh, reactions and feelings in that moment for me. So that is my trigger. So you have to be very considerate with me because I expect that. Now, that's also something Does that, that make you sensitive or triggering. That makes me. Well, someone can label it as a what's your word? What is it? What does it mean when a word is like another word? Synonymous. A synonym. Um, <laughs> it could be a synonym, which means similar to. 
right? I didn't know that's what that meant. All right. It right. means similar to what? does not necessarily mean the same. But <laughs> we looking like real elementary right now, and it's sounding stupid. Thank you. That's because we're going with all these definitions. But so the thing is, someone could can consider it sensitive, but at the same time, is something that's triggering sensitive, or is it something that's just been deeply embedded into somebody for whatever reason that it may be? And and I think that's I think Lonnie. I think I that's the say, let's heart. get something of value for Lonnie. Yeah. Let's let's, <laughs> let's get <laughs> can, can I can I ask a question? Okay. Um so when we're talking about this topic, I don't want to say the word. We're talking about this topic with respect to dating. And I remember when 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 Ralph was up here earlier, um he he said something. You said that he's turned off like easily by stuff. Very. And I wonder if when you're dating somebody, how do you know when you can see that they're triggered by something? How do you know when you should just be like, you know what? This ain't for me. I'm good. I ain't, you know, like, like, like Ralph would do. Or do you like dive into a conversation like, hey, I see you may, I may have made you uncomfortable. Like, is there something I should know? You want to talk about something? You know, did I offend you? Is there, you know, like how, how do you know which person to actually take the next step with, or do you just cut it off and stop it right there? Here's the thing, right? A lot of people, um, what happens is that people play with words. So, for example, they 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 use the word red flag, right? But truly, truly red flag has a lot of different meanings. They use one general blanket term, but it's not one blanket term, right? Red flag could be, oh, you feel triggered, oh, is this, or is that. And a lot of times, what people don't understand, and this is what is the harshest thing, right? There are these things that you have to overcome to be with somebody. These are like almost militant and military style. And I don't care. Look, YouTube, pay attention to what I'm saying right now, YouTube. Ain't nobody in a successful relationship that can't tell you the bullshit they've been through. There's yeah. no such thing. You have to go through real bullshit. So what happens with triggering is like, man, she really ordered that extra fish. <laughs> it's um, that extra lobster tail because bitches will order a whole meal and be like, can I get a lobster tail on the side? Yeah. I don't even like lobster. You lobster overcome your triggers with her. <laughs> but not on a date though. <laughs> no, you don't. No, you, you don't. You overcome it because you like this person. And at the end of the day, what it really comes to when it comes to dating, the shit that you deal with, you have to ask yourself, is that person worth it? That's and when what that I just person said. doesn't become worth it at the end of dating, that's when all the toxin shit comes out. Because that's all the shit you were holding on. But let's just say you're dating someone and you go through this process and the person ends up being worth it, then you become couple's goal, you become all of this stuff. It's just, is that person worth it? So if somebody triggers you on some shit that you don't like and you go with it, I'm not telling you not to do it. I'm just saying, is that person worth it? Well, that's the thing. They think so until you have to live with it again. When you, like, I think that everybody, not everybody, I think a lot of people can turn a blind eye to the things that they don't like in the first one to two dates if they are feeling that person, right? So something that might trigger me I, in real life, with me and my girl, we would go out to eat, and she just throws food away. That is my trigger, right? Especially because of how I grew up. It's for me. It's like you don't even know what it's like to starve, and we just you just order an appetizer just to have one bite, and then we just tossing them out. You know what I'm saying? So like for me, I would thought I can live with that. Like we would go out to eat, and it was consistent, right? She would order mad different things. One bite, one bite, one bite, one bite. Everything's garbage, right? And for me, I was like, yo, this is not going to work. So I had to sit down and had to tell her, like, yo, listen, honestly, when you throw away food and you waste food like that, it brings me to a point where it's almost disrespectful to me because I couldn't even afford food like that for a majority of my life, right? And, you know, we had to have a, a, a certain, we have to have a, fi a, a fine balance because she didn't live that way, right? But now it's like, all right, cool. Maybe instead of ordering five appetizers, she'll order two. 
And I'm like, yo, we can always revisit the spot. It's not like this is the last time we're going to come here. <laughs> like, you don't need to try everything on the menu off the first rip. Like, you know, so, but again, it took, I, I kept on ignoring it until it built up to one day when I was like, yo, like this at this point is just, you're just wasteful, right? And it made me look at her as a different in a different light but it's not that she wasn't doing anything different that she's already been doing she's still the same person it's just that her actions is bringing up something that was you know a trigger for me that made me look at her differently so until we had a different conversation and she was able to make some adjustments that's how we were able to carry forward because if i promise you she would have just a throwaway food for the last three three years that i've been with her i would have never had last i'd be like nah this is not gonna work for me that is a that's a great example of a trigger. You know what I'm saying? More of the story what I'm just trying to piggyback off of off of is can you live with it? Which we tend to try. And I don't I live with it. There's some things that my wife does that triggers me. Like what, Alan? What do you mean? Like I, <laughs> don't, do I don't like get close to the microphone, Alan. No, like Real close. I'm not I don't want to put her business out, but don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> We're very Haitian Haitian. <laughs> Like we're Haitian, Haitian. I thought about that. What does that okay. mean? He said we're y'all Haitian, Haitian as hell because because Marie tried to tell me I made Peekleys wrong and you and me because I added some extra stuff. They were like you you wasn't making Peekleys. You was making something else. And I'm like y'all Haitian, Haitian. Like y'all just gotta relax. <laughs> what does Haitian, Haitian mean? Like y'all like the only Haitians I know. All right, like we're Haitian, Haitian, right? And the thing is, like when I was growing <laughs> up, being in Haiti, it was, Haiti's very classism based, right? Because there's no there's not white people over there. It's all classism, right? So it's like classism is funny. It's like if you do this, you have no class. If you do this, you have a high class. If you do this, you have this, you have that. And I don't I don't want to give us an example, but it'll be like, let's say if we're eating, and I'll be like, oh, I'm gonna eat with a a a, a, a nah, I can't use that example. She'll kill me. Ellen, but don't get yourself. All I'm saying is like she would do things, and I'd be like, damn, my nigga. Like eat fish head. Yes. <laughs> I know what you mean. Right? And I'll be like, yo, my ne- like, yo, chill. My sister-in-law like, like, a like how- Caribbean woman. She's a real beautiful Caribbean say, woman. What's like- wrong with that? <laughs> <laughs> like how Air, uh, Amanda eats a chicken bone? Oh. <laughs> That's triggering for me. Like, that- So Yumi, you, like, Yumi, wants to, Yumi wants to body, body 16 chicken bones. And I'm like, bro, I can't do it. I'm sitting right in front of you. <laughs> All right, Alan. But- yeah. At the end of the Are you day, Haitian? but at, at, at the end of the day, it does trigger me because when I was a kid, my parents was very adamant about how you said, how you ate, how you talk. My parents were really big on how you did things. So moving forward, I'm married to a woman that I'm in love with and that I love, and then she's doing this in front of me. And I'm like, damn, I gotta deal with. All right, I was like, it's not a deal breaker. It's okay, <laughs> right? It's so you. But I know it bothers me. And then when she sees me sometimes, she'll be like, because there was a time she used to eat. Um, there's a thing in Haiti. They like they got these little things that they eat. I can't remember what it is. And she would order them from there. Her mother would be, I'd be like, yo, bro, you can't do that. Like, so the <laughs> What thing, is it? It's like a fruit or something? I don't. It doesn't even matter. You're not it's supposed slimy? to eat them? Yeah. I'm not to me. But. <laughs> but. Uh, slimy? Uh, I, I, but the thing is, like, her and her mother, they got. Like they got their thing because they're from one side of Haiti that we're not from, and that's their thing. Like her mother be like, "Oh, we're gonna eat this and we're gonna do this and we're gonna freeze meatballs for fucking sixteen weeks in the freezer." Like they're into these things, and I'd be like, "Bro, I can't do it, yo." You wait, you don't freeze protein? I don't eat. I... Not for that many weeks. I don't eat leftovers. I don't like to eat leftovers. Do not give me food from yesterday. That sounds like my girl. <laughs> okay, <laughs> okay, King Allen. <laughs> I'm not even gonna lie, I'm like that. But I, you know, I, Ooh, child, I'm my glad my mother's husband Caribbean, like so she, you know, sometimes I have to. But I'm, I, yo, you I'm mean not gonna lie, like, mean, some things yo, just don't taste good. If the I next gave day. you spaghetti and an egg, would that be triggering for you? Probably. <laughs> oh, I'm just curious. <laughs> and didn't your mom make that? Downstairs, that's Yumi why he was said it. eating. Yumi was eating, and then I got downstairs. I was like, "Is that? Is that the?" Is that that piece of meat from two weeks ago? A week ago? She was like, yeah, it was, was in the freezer. I warmed that. it up. And then she was like, yeah. I was like, Nick, Nick, are you eating food from seven days ago? She was like, what's wrong with that? I'm like, who the... Who? 
Okay, Alan. Editors, cut this out. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like my house. I don't know. We maybe we eat uh leftovers in my crib. How long? Until I don't want to eat it no more. How many days? What is it? I don't know. Yeah, what is it? That's what is like it? Fish, fish, fish is not gonna last as long as green bean. Meatballs. You know. You may have meatballs. I don't really care for 30 meatballs. Days. 30 days? The fridge or the freezer? the freezer? No, I believe in the freezer. Cooked meatballs or They're like... Cooked. Are you crazy? I, I bet Yumi can uh, cook the meatballs up and you would never even know where they I were. I do know. I'd be like, this is leftover. I'm not I here. don't put cooked food in the freezer. Me mm-hmm. neither. If I have I do. leftovers, I put them in the refrigerator and my kids like to eat whatever is there. I do it all the time. Like, nah. when <laughs> I make a gumbo, best believe I'm making enough and, and let's be, for like Italians, a bunch. You're not supposed to eat Lasagna, bay ziti, those type of Any things pasta? until the next day. Why? Because the the sauce Settles. has to settle. Oh, into the you pasta. Know, that's one thing about me. If you make things. pasta, I'm not it's eating like that marinade. the second day. Why? Why you're supposed to? Because first of all, especially if it's if it's a creamy if it's pasta, from a restaurant, it's okay. You um, creamy, no, 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 no. Even if it's from a restaurant, it gets really oily. Uh, the next day, you literally have to cook it again like put more heavy cream put more cheese and make it creamy again if you just warm it up or just cook it on the stove again like it's just oily I don't like really that I think you have a trigger with all pastas and, and I can't even I mean, eat I don't if think... I eat leftovers I have, to, <laughs> I have to warm it up in a pan I can't put no oh, microwave oh yeah Dominicans do that <laughs> what I know we got to wrap it up, but I'm just saying. So all I'm saying is this. This was a great conversation. We're going to chop up and take out a lot of things in this episode, but it's still going to be a great... We're going to take Aaron's face We'll probably get like 20 to 30 minutes Uh in here. I said, we'll probably get 20 to 30 minutes in here. No, but what I'm saying... Alan said he don't eat leftovers. Boy, you... Honestly, Alan ain't never been hungry. I don't... (laughs) That's what I got to say. Alan ain't never been hungry. She'd be like, you're not hungry then. If you're not eating it, that you're not hungry. You can't be that hungry. We would go. You know when I discovered I'm like, but it? We would I go am. to a party. Like, let's say we went to a party at your house. And you guys put amazing food out. I'm talking about, we went to a party at your house on a Saturday. You put amazing, you may take a bunch of food from your house. She did? Let's just say, hypothetically. Oh. <laughs> I was thinking about our party last year. I was like, okay, so, yeah. this is Saturday. Nigga, it's Wednesday. I'm like, that doesn't look like them place from Aaron House. She's like, yeah, we still eating <laughs> I was like, it's like a week ago, bro. It's not a week. That's like my mom. She does that. And find a solution. Right. Thank you. Because you're just complaining at this point. You're just complaining. And I don't want to hear it. People and they complaints. I'm sorry. No, What's wrong with men? Comp- so men can't have a safe place to complain? No, I think everyone... Can Everybody can has. have a safe place to complain. Well, first of all, this is your wife and your... Well, this is not here yet. And your yes, everyday... And yeah. your everyday eating, I feel like <laughs> we gotta go. Have you ever told her you don't like to? Eat? Of course he has. Right. So all the time, but have it's you not found a, deal a solution. Breaker. Right. That's thank first you. First of all, I have a I have a family of five. Uh, leftovers really don't last at our house. Like we probably eat leftovers maybe the next day, but that shit doesn't last in my house. Especially when you got boys. Out. Oh, go ahead. And then my parents be taking food to work. Like we don't ever really. Yeah, you gotta food that pack your lunch that many days. <laughs> Mandy, Mandy, close out. Thank you guys for listening to <laughs> this very impromptu uh, topic of ours. It's been all over the place, but fun. Ooh, that up, that up. <laughs> um, but thank you guys for supporting us. Instagram, YouTube. TikTok, Patreon, we're on everything. Facebook, you know, we've been doing really good with Facebook. So please continue to, to support us, support Datebox, um, support our merch. We're here for everything. We gotta keep the lights on, guys. And Alan needs to stay on the mic. So we need to get the money to make we, we sure need the money for a cord. <laughs> <laughs> we need to get money, money to make sure the cords are always <laughs> intact, okay? Do, wait, so you got another cord? <laughs> yes, he has a cord that works right now, but you never know what, what could happen in a week or two. Some, but we appreciate it. And you guys know we reinvest. We're dividend reinvestors. Absolutely. Amen. Yeah. But thank you guys. We'll see you in the next episode. Peace.